On this first Saturday in Youth Month, as you might expect, our young people take the spotlight. I'm Theodore Henry. Also in the show, we tackle some common misconceptions about epilepsy, otherwise called FITS. Stay tuned. We share a lot of sensitive information and data. And once criminals get access to this information, indeed, people are at risk based on the sensitivity of the information that they share. The most powerful way to learn anything is by doing. Up next, students discover the healing properties of medicinal plants by making soaps at the Natural History Museum of Jamaica. Necessity is the mother of invention, and we had to find a way to survive. And so for the plants, the natural gift of the Creator, we could rely on it to guide us into what we needed to do. I didn't know about Fenzik and your pharmaceutical things. I know about bush, bush. So if I had a headache, I knew as a child that I should use the leaves of three mackerel bush and a piece of cloth and tighten my head and the pain would go. The use of herbs as medicine. While this age old practice has been overlooked by many, the Institute of Jamaica saw it fitting to mount an exhibition on medicinal plants of Jamaica and their uses, bringing to the present the medicinal habits used in the past. So at least 330 plants have been found growing in Jamaica, have been identified as having medicinal value. Of that 334, at least 193 have been assessed for their biochemical activities and 23 of those have, are actually endemic plants. Not every plant, though in its natural form is good, is accessible to everybody. And knowing the information about the plant and wanting to get that into the hands of the people, some of our scientists have begun to study extensively some of these plants to see how they can be formulated in such a way so that they can be packaged and be accessible to the public. You just don't wake up and say, Eureka, I have found it. They would have learned from the people in the community what plants were used for what purpose. So you, you, you know all those things in your, in your childhood because they were continually using the plants of nature to assist in what they were doing. Ever since I was a child, my mommy always said me to break a piece of bush to make tea if the tea bag run out. But what was I getting out of it? I had no clue. And sometimes people say it worked, some other people say it didn't work. So that's why I really did the research to find out if these plants actually work. So we started only making butter brush, which is also known as Calistemon viminalis. And then we broadened and we focused on lemongrass, we focus on most of the herbs that are used by native Jamaicans to cure different ailments. In addition to the showcase, students from the Dunrobin, Chetola Park and the Rollington Town Primary Schools were scientists for a day as they participated in one of the institution's monthly and afternoon with a scientist sessions. Modeled around the Ministry of Education's academic calendar, the mandate of the program is to expose students to and encourage an appreciation for different disciplines of science through fun-filled scientific activities. I've been promoting entrepreneurship, especially in the medicinal plant industry. So I've, um, one of the things I do is to give back. So I volunteer even at my children's school. We have an entrepreneurial club where I teach them to make different products from plants. I learned that that they can use herbs to make soap. It was very exciting because I got to see um, 
what dangerous chemicals they use in it and how is it how is it correct to go on the skin first we had to put some coconut oil in like a metal cup then we had to put shea butter in it and melt it and then we put it in sodium hydroxide and it was very 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 hot I spilled it a couple times but it was okay just a little clean up and it began to get thick so I was like what should I do now and she was like just mix it it's normal and then we got to put what we want in there I put um, charcoal in there and then I made a swirl in the mold it was a very good experience I'm so happy our students were up able to participate in the activity held here at the Institute where they learn more about medicinal plants. I believe it's very important for them to know that the plants that are found right there in their backyards can be used for healing of ailments that they'll have, the common cold, whatever the, the, the ailments may be. This is what I would like to engage the people in. Go back to their communities and learn how people lived a generation which came out of slavery could neither read nor write and yet they were able to contain themselves and to live. We want the students to have some respect for the heritage of this country because it is going to guide you to the future. We continue the celebration of Youth Month with our next feature, which showcases two young men who demonstrate the heights that can be reached through hard work, determination, and a little support. For those students going into fifth form and sixth form this year, you might be a little bit nervous. Why? Because you have the CAPE and CSEC subjects to sit. But don't worry, we have invited two young men who recently completed their examinations to speak to you on how their experience was and to give you some tips on how you can do your best this year. Joining me are Gawain Wright and Duane Henriquez. Thanks for joining me, guys. You're welcome, yes. Okay, Gawain. So, uh, which school are you coming from? I'm coming from the Mona High School and I sat chemistry, biology, physics, maths, English, electrical, geography and social studies. I got a one in all sciences, a one in math, English, electrical, and I got two in social study and geography. Congratulations. So, okay, so I guess you can talk to students now, give them some of the studying techniques that you use to do so well in your exams. What, what are the tricks that you used? Well, for me, I ensured that I became comfortable with the information that was given to me. And so when it is drawing nearer to examination period, I don't have to stress about getting that information inside because it would already be in my mind. The next thing I do is I make a study timetable. So I spend equal amount of time in each subject area. The next thing I do is I try my best to have interest in all my subjects because without interest, you will not do well in that subject area. Awesome. So Gawain, um, were there any persons in your life who helped you to, you know, to push yourself to, to do well academically? Yes, indeed, miss. I would first of all like to say it would be possible without God. And my sister, my sister was the main driving force behind me. She would be there. She would give me the motivation that I needed and she would help me with my work. She's a scientist herself and so if I have any issues with homework or stuff like that, she would give me advice and show me the right path. Okay, tell me about some of the activities that you were involved in at Mona, some of the prizes that you received. I'm sure you got some. I was a science club president 
the Max Club president and I was a part of the Spanish club also. And the final, final question is where do you see yourself in 10 years time? I see myself in a lab with all my students and we are doing work that we all enjoy and trying to better the scientific area of this world. Thank you so much Gawain and I hope that you will achieve your goal of becoming a lab technician just like your sister. And now we will be joined by Cape student Duane Henriquez from the Spalding High School in Carindon. So Duane, um, you just completed Cape. Was it upper six or lower six? Tell me a little bit about the grades and the subjects that you did at Spalding High. Well, I'm from um, Scobler in Manchester. I did um, MOB, which is Management of Business, Principles of Accounts, Sociology. Caribbean studies. Um, I got three twos and three fours. Awesome. So, Duane, did you know that you'd have done as well as you, you did and why? I have a lot of persons around me motivating me to do well. They helped me academically, they motivated me and also financially. Without these persons, I, would, I wouldn't have done so well as I would be worried about things like finances and if no one really cared or that sort of things like that. Okay. What will you be doing for the rest of the year? I'll be attending the the U uh, the University of the West Indies doing um, bachelor's of science degree in banking and finance. What is your advice to students like Gawain who will be sitting uh, Cape subjects this year? Uh, my advice to students doing Cape this year is that you must manage your time wisely um, because it's a lot of work. The, the CAPE syllabus is very wide. Um, it's practice independent learning, read widely, so you can keep in check with your teachers, do your IAs on time, which is a very important part of doing CAPE, and a very time consuming part of doing CAPE. Hard work is the, the, one of the kindest things, and it won't disappoint. Once you work hard, you can get anything you want in life. Thank you so much, Gawain. Thanks. So there you have it, wise advice from Gawain and Duane. If you are entering sixth or fifth form this year, I hope that you were jotting down those tips and you know, I hope you were thinking about what they said. All the best in your future endeavors. I know you will do well. Hi there, I'm Simone Wolf with your JIS News of the Week. An incentive scheme has been established to aggressively tackle murders and violence against vulnerable groups such as women, children and the elderly. It will be operated through Crime Stop. The Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Branch, the Criminal Investigative Branch, with the support of major organized crime and anti-corruption agency will bring increased focus to investigating these incidents to identify and apprehend individuals associated with these acts. These branches will work with the Center for Investigation of Sexual Offense and Child Abuse that will be strengthened to adequately investigate the crimes against these particularly vulnerable groups. The National Security Ministry will be undertaking a comprehensive review of the parole process within the Department of Correctional Services. The directive comes from the National Security Council following a meeting in which the security forces raised concerns about parole being granted to offenders whose release had been assessed as being contrary to the public interest given the magnitude of their criminal records. Prime Minister Andrew Holness is insisting that schools must adhere to government's policies that restrict corporal punishment and remove mandatory auxiliary fees, particularly at the early childhood level. We have been literally saying to our children, a slap is right. When that child leaves, then a kick is right, a stab is right, and then shooting is right. And it only takes one to create the violence and mayhem. Prime Minister Holness was addressing the official handing over for the newly completed Jamaica China Goodwill Infant School in West Central St. Andrew. We will be fulfilling our constitutionally established obligation to the children of Jamaica to provide them with free pre-primary education. 
In the meantime, Prime Minister Holness is seeking to assure citizens that Jamaica's sovereignty is being protected in all dealings with the Chinese government. The government of Jamaica has been very strategic. And the sovereignty of Jamaica is always foremost in my mind. So when we engage, we engage with that as a non-negotiable part of the partnership. The National Housing Trust will be spending $54 million on research to determine the feasibility of using bamboo as housing material. The project will be carried out in phases starting in mid-2019. Bamboo, the world over, is used as a building product. And we want to be able to benefit as much as possible from that, inclusive of the fact that it is stronger than steel the tensile strength. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says government will be examining its land bank to see how public sector representative bodies can partner with the National Housing Trust to develop the lands identified. We will work out a program on the housing front that I'm sure will be very enticing and attractive to our policemen and women, our nurses, our teachers and our public sector workers generally. Eleven student nurses will receive critical care training under the Ministry of Health United Kingdom Bilateral Critical Care Training Program. The nurses will train for seven months in Jamaica and another five in the UK. Between the China-Jamaica MOU and the Jamaica-UK MOU, it has basically more than double the capacity, right? At least double, but I suspect more than double the capacity for critical care training for nurses in the country. Patients and patient care providers at the National Chest Hospital now have easier access to the facility with the commissioning of two new elevators. And you can't have a situation where you have a hospital and patients or doctors or nurses can't move from one floor to the next. Um, efficiently. I mean, you compromise lives in the process, and that's not what we're about. We're about saving lives. A diagnostic and early childhood intervention center has been opened at the Sam Sharp Teachers College, giving special needs children in Western Jamaica access to psychoeducational evaluation. I want to see that come back now, that we track every child that is born and make sure they are developing appropriately and where there is need for early intervention it takes place. The second phase of the Tablet in Schools program is on in earnest after two contracts worth 30 million US dollars were signed with Geotech Vision Limited and Innovative Corporate Solutions Limited. We now need to use technology in the teaching and learning process because we cannot advance and take our place among the leading nations of the world if we do not continue to increase access to technology. And finally, direct flights from Russia are now arriving in the country once every 10 days. The first direct flight, Nordwin Airlines Airbus 322 from Moscow, arrived at the Sangsa International Airport recently and the tourism minister says there are plans for weekly flights. Now you're flying to Jamaica, you're flying to Cuba, and you're flying to Domrep. Here is a wonderful opportunity for us to really pull that together and to offer to the, um, the, 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 the Russian visitors multi-destination experiences. Those are some of the stories making news this week. I'm Simone Wolf. Imagine this. You're out and about and someone falls to the ground and starts convulsing. This person is having an attack of what we Jamaicans call fits. You want to help, but what do you do? Well, if your treatment involves a dirty shoe, it could cause more harm than good. If you want to know what actually should be done, Watch this. What do Socrates, Theodore Roosevelt, Charles Dickens, Alfred Nobel, Prince, Lil Wayne, Elton John, Danny Glover, and Hugo Weaving all have in common? If you said they're all famous, that's not quite the answer I'm looking for. 
All these prominent figures are believed to have or had what many know as fits or seizures associated with epilepsy, one of the oldest and least understood medical conditions. It is not Duppy take you over, it is not spirits. We have these myths that we do need to dispel in Jamaica. Some people think it's contagious and it is not contagious. You cannot catch epilepsy. Anyone, anytime can get epilepsy. So what is epilepsy? It's a disorder of the brain characterized by recurrent seizures, which are short periods of involuntary movements involving a part of the body, a partial or focal seizure, or the entire body, a generalized seizure. Our brains run on electricity, which is produced by cells called neurons. In some people, these neurons sometimes produce a sudden electrical burst or power surge, resulting in a seizure. Epilepsy is a chronic disorder, just like asthma or diabetes. It's a disorder of the brain. And so when a patient has a seizure, they do have unusual behavior at the time of their seizure. But otherwise, they're usually quite normal. It's also not a mental illness. People with epilepsy are not crazy. It's a brain disorder, but it's not a mental illness. The cause of epilepsy can be genetic meaning that you can be born with a genetic disorder that um, predisposes your brain to be abnormally wired and that you are more likely to produce these epileptic discharges and have seizures recurrently. Sometimes you may have, um, when the baby is being formed in the first few months of their embryological life, you may have an abnormality happening with the brain formation. Then. There are other conditions that can occur at any time during someone's life that can cause epilepsy. Those um, conditions that are acquired would be those related to a physical injury to the brain or an infection in the brain such as a, a um, meningitis which is an infection of the covering around the brain, or an encephalitis, which is an infection of the brain substance itself, as well as you may have um, stroke, decreased blood supply, nutrients going to the brain, also causing seizures and epilepsy. Seizures do not always involve convulsions or jerking of the body. There are in fact over 20 different seizure types. Many are quite subtle, as in the case of 12-year-old Liana. And we found out when she was about three months old, um, it, was, it was something very subtle. She, we, we found out that she was just staring in one direction for probably a minute or two, keeping that stare. For Marvin Fullerton, his experience was different. I first found out in 1994, November 1994, when I was in techn technical high school. What I did was feeling some itching on my skin. I went to the school nurse, asked her what was wrong with me, and she told me that my, I need to change my bath soap. Right. And what happened after that? Well, I changed my bath soap and nothing really changed after, but it was November, January 4, 1995, when I had my first attack. And I woke up in my father's car going to hospital. Even though he was soon diagnosed with epilepsy, Marvin was able to live a normal life for most of his years as a student. I was able to go to school. I was put on simple medications such as Tegetal CR 200. Not, no problem. It was easy taking it. It prevented me from having an attack, but my body was not having much problems at those times. Marvin went on to attend the Vocational Training Development Institute, VTDI, and the University of Technology. He holds a diploma in architecture and construction management. But despite his academic achievements, he still has challenges gaining employment. I'm not working right now because it was just the other day I was in the hospital, right? And I got an interview for a job. The interview was wonderful, but I was in the hospital, so the job somewhat got turned down. They found out about the situation and I got turned down. Unfortunately, there are those who believe that persons with epilepsy cannot work or lead normal lives. Most people, 70 to 80 percent of people with epilepsy, can have their seizures controlled. It's the person you employ who you 
don't ha yet have their first seizure, those are more are the ones that you should be worried about because any of us can develop epilepsy for different reasons at any time. If you believe someone is having a seizure, there are some things you should never do. Do not put any objects in the mouth. Do not put a spoon to hold the tongue down. Do not bring scallion. Do not take a dirty sneaker and put over the face. So then, what should you do? You need to cushion their heads. Whether you have a cushion or a jacket, you can take off and make a cushion just to support the head so they don't damage themselves. You loosen, if it's a man with a tie, loosen his clothing so that he can get some air and he can relax. You turn the person on the side. Do not put them with their heads right back. Turn them on their side and the tongue will fall and any fluids of the mouth will drain out to the side. And I guarantee you, you cannot swallow your tongue. A seizure would take between three to five minutes. Now, if the seizure continues for more than five minutes, you should take that person to the hospital. Anti-seizure medication is the most commonly used method to control seizures. Discounts are available for epilepsy patients who are registered with the National Health Fund. But there are side effects. Some persons experience weight gain, drowsiness, irritability, skin rashes and blood platelet changes among others, all of which require understanding from those around them. Then, there is also medical marijuana or medical cannabis. It seems to have helped a number of, especially children with epilepsy that have been intractable, that is difficult to treat. But in Jamaica, we still need legislation in order to use it and there's still a lot of research that needs to be done about the dosing of um, the CBD or cannabidiol to be used to treat epilepsy but it surely seems as though it may be promising. Research has also shown that diets such as a ketogenic diet can help control the onset of epileptic seizures. The Jamaican Association for Epilepsy offers support for persons with epilepsy and their families. The association also holds regular meetings with members at the Andrews Hospital to share experiences and discuss concerns. They can be contacted at telephone 968-8274 or email jaepilepsy at gmail.com. Cancer, stress, high blood pressure. Guard yourself against these potentially deadly conditions by eating healthy. Give your body long life with foods such as low-fat milk, dried and fresh peas and beans, unsalted nuts and seeds, fresh vegetables, fruits and coconut water, and eliminate processed seasonings such as seasoning salt, soy sauces and ketchup. When it comes to meats, remember to remove the skin to reduce the intake of fats and oils. Meats should also be baked, steamed, grilled or roasted. Fish is also a preferred protein option. To eat healthy, fill your body with a variety of foods from all the food groups. And remember, eat at a slow pace and in small bites to help aid digestion. This helps to maintain a healthy, balanced and nutritious diet, strengthening your body to ward off illness and prolong life. And that's all for the show. If you like this or any other Jamaica magazine, watch it again on YouTube or on the JIS website. And you can always keep up with the latest government happenings by visiting our social media pages. While you're there, give us a like. I'm Theodore Henry. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.